श्री स्वामी समर्थ अवधूत चिंतन श्री गुरुदेव दत्त सदगुरु साई नाथाय नम वेलकम व्यूअर्स टू सोल स्पिरिच्युअलिटी होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग गुड प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू आवर चैनल एंड क्लिक ऑन द बेल आइकन सो दैट यू विल गेट नोटिफाइड ऑफ ऑल आर अपडेट्स ऑल्सो लाइक एंड शेयर दिस वीडियो विथ योर फ्रेंड्स एंड डोंट फॉर गेट टू लीव योर कमेंट्स थैंक यू साई सच्चरित्र चैप्टर टू ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ राइटिंग द वर्क इन कैपेसिटी एंड बोल्डनेस इन द अंडरटेकिंग हॉट डिस्कशन कन्फरिंग सिग्निफिकंट एंड प्रोफेटिक टाइटल ऑफ हिमाडपंत नेसेसिटी ऑफ अ गुरु इन द लास्ट चैप्टर द ऑथर मेन्शन इन द ओरिजिनल मराठी बुक दैट ही वुड स्टेट द रीजन दैट लैड हिम टू अंडरटेक द वर्क एंड द पर्सन क्वालिफाइड टू रीड द सेम एंड such other points now in this chapter he starts to tell the same object of writing the work in the first chapter i described sai baba's miracle of checking and destroying the epidemic of cholera by grinding wheat and throwing the flour on the outskirts of the village i heard other miracles of sai baba to my great delight and this delight burst forth into this poetic work I also thought that the description of this grand miracles of Sai Baba would be interesting and instructive to his devotees and would remove their sins and so I began to write the sacred life and teachings of Sai Baba the life of the saint is neither logical nor dialectical it shows us the true and great path in capacity and boldness in undertaking the work Himarpant thought that he was not a fit person to undertake the work. He said, "I do not know the life of my intimate friend, nor do I know my own mind. Then how can I write the life of a saint or describe the nature of incarnations, which even the Vedas were unable to do? One must be a saint himself before he could know other saints. Then how can I describe their glory?" To write the life of a saint is the most difficult though one may as well measure the depth of the water of the seven seas or enclose the sky with cloth trappings i knew that this was the most venturesome undertaking which might expose me to ridicule i therefore invoke sai baba's grace the premier poet saint of maharashtra shri nyaneshwar maharaj has stated that the lord loves those who write the lives of saints and the saints also have a peculiar method of their own of getting the service which the devotees long for successfully accomplished the saints inspire the work the devotee becomes only an indirect cause or instrument to achieve the end for instance in 1700 saka year the poet mahipati aspired to write the lives of saints saints inspired him and got the work done so also in 1800 shaka year das ganush service was accepted the former wrote four works bhakt vijaya sant vijaya bhakt lilamrit and sant katamrit while the latter wrote two bhakt lilamrit and sant katamrit in which the lives of modern saints were described In chapters 31, 32, and 33 of Bhakt Lilamrit, and in chapter 57 of Sant Katamrit, the sweet life and teachings of Sai Baba are very well depicted. These have been separately published in Sai Lila magazine, numbers 11 and 12, volume 17. The readers are advised to read these chapters. So also, Sai Baba's wonderful lilas are described in a small descent book named. Shri Sai Nath Bhajan Mala by Mrs Savitri Bai Raghunath Tendulkar of Bandra Das Gunu Maharaj has also composed various sweet poems on Sai Baba A devotee named Amidas Bhavani Mehta has also published some stories of Shri Baba in Gujarati Some numbers of Sai Nath Prabha a magazine published by Dakshina Bhiksha Sanstha of Shirdi are also published Then the question of objection comes in that while so many works regarding Sai Baba are extant why should this Satcharitra be written 
and where is its necessity the answer is plain and simple the life of sai baba is as wide and deep as the infinite ocean and all can dive deep into the same and take out precious gems of knowledge and bhakti and distribute them to the aspiring public the stories parables and teachings of sai baba are very wonderful they will give peace and happiness to the people who are afflicted with sorrows and heavy loaded with miseries of this worldly existence and also bestow knowledge and wisdom both in the worldly and in spiritual domains if these teachings of sai baba which are as interesting and instructive as the vedic lore are listened to and meditated upon the devotees will get what they long for namely union with brahman mastery in eightfold yoga bliss of meditation etc so i thought that i should call these stories together that would be my best upasna this collection would be most delightful to those simple souls whose eyes were not blessed with sai baba's darshan so i set about collecting sai baba's teachings and expressions the outcome of his boundless and natural self realization it was sai baba who inspired me in this matter in fact i surrendered my ego at his feet and thought that my path was clear and that he would make me quite happy here and in the next world i could not myself ask sai baba to give me permission for this work so i requested mr madhav rao deshpande alias shama baba's most intimate devotee to speak to him for me he pleaded for my cause and said to sai baba this anna sahib wishes to write your biography don't say that you are a poor begging fakir and there is no necessity to write it but if you agree and help him he will write or rather your feet or grace will accomplish the work without your consent and blessing nothing can be done successfully when sai baba heard this request he was moved and blessed me by giving me his udi or sacred ashes and placing his boon bestowing hand on my head said let him make a collection of stories and experiences keep notes and memos i will help him he is only an outward instrument i should write myself my autobiography and satisfy the wishes of my devotees he should get rid of his ego place or surrender it at my feet he who acts like this in life him i help the most what of my life stories i serve him in his house in all possible ways when his ego is completely annihilated and there is left no trace of it i myself shall enter into him and shall myself write my own life hearing my stories and teachings will create faith in devotees hearts and they will easily get self realization and bliss let there be no insistence on establishing one's own view no attempt to refute others opinions no discussions of pros and cons of any subject the word discussion put me in my mind of promise to explain the story of my getting the title of himarpanta and now i begin to relate the same i was on close friendly terms with kaka sahib dikshit and nana sahib sandorkar they pressed me to go to shirdi and have baba's darshan and i promised them to do so but something in the interval turned up which prevented me from going to shirdi the son of a friend of mine at lonawala fell ill my friend tried all possible means physical and spiritual but the fever would not abate at length he got his guru to sit by the bedside of his son but this too was of no avail hearing this i thought what was the utility of the guru if he could not save my friend's son if the guru can't do anything for us why should i go to shirdi at all thinking in this way i postponed my shirdi trip but the inevitable must happen and it happened in my case as follows mr nana sahib sandorkar who was a prant officer was going on a tour to basen from thana he came to dadar and was waiting for a train bound for basen in the meanwhile a bandra local turned up he sat in it and came to bandra and sent for me and took me to task for putting off my shirdi trip 
Nana's argument for my Shirdi trip was convincing and delightful and so I decided to start for Shirdi the same night. I packed up my luggage and started for Shirdi. I planned to go to Dadar and there to catch the train for Manmad and so I booked myself for Dadar and sat in the train. While the train was to start, a non-medan came hastily to my compartment and seeing all my paraphernalia asked me where I was bound to. I told him my plan. He then suggested that I should straight go to Boribandar and not get down at Dadar for the Manmad mail did not get down at Dadar at all. If this little miracle or Leela had not happened, I would not have reached Shirdi the next day as settled and many doubts would have assailed me. But that was not to be. As fortune favoured me, I reached Shirdi the next day before 9 or 10 am. Mr. Bhau Sahib or Kaka Dikshit was waiting for me there. This was in 1910 when there was only one place, Sathiswada for lodging pilgrim devotees. After alighting from the Tonga, I was anxious to have darshan. Then the great devotee Tatya Sahib Nurkar returned from the masjid and said that Sai Baba was at the corner of the Wada and that I should first get the preliminary darshan and then after bath see him at leisure. Hearing this I ran and prostrated before Baba and then my joy knew no bounds. I found more than what Nana Chandurkar had told me. All my senses were satisfied and I forgot thirst and hunger. The moment I touched Sai Baba's feet, I began a new lease of life. I felt myself much obliged to those who spurred and helped me to get the darshan and I considered them as my real relatives and I cannot repay their debt. I only remember them and prostrate mentally before them. The peculiarity of Sai Baba's darshan as I found it is that by his darshan our thoughts are changed. The force of previous actions is abated and gradually non-attachment of this passion towards worldly object grows up. It is by the merit of actions in many past births that such darshan is got and if only you see Sai Baba, really all the world becomes or assumes the form of Sai Baba. Hot Discussion On the first day of my arrival in Childi, there was a discussion between me and Baba Sai Bhate regarding the necessity of a guru. I contended, why should we lose our freedom and submit to others? When we have to do our duty, why a guru is necessary? One must try his best and save himself. What can a guru do to a man who does nothing but sleeps indolently? Thus I pleaded free will while Mr. Bhate took up the other side, namely destiny and said, Whatever is bound to happen must happen. Even great men have failed. Man proposes one way, but God disposes the other way. Brush aside your cleverness, pride or egoism won't help you. This discussion with all its pros and cons went for an hour or so and as usual no decision was arrived at. We had to stop the discussion ultimately as we were exhausted. The net results of this was that I lost my peace of mind and found that unless there is a strong body consciousness and egoism, there would be no discussion. In other words, it is egoism which breeds discussion. Then when we went to the masjid with others, Baba asked Kaka Sahib Dikshit the following. What was going on in the Satewada? What was the discussion about? And staring at me, Baba further added. What did this Hemadpanth say? Here in this world, I was much surprised. The masjid was at a considerable distance from Sateswada, where I was staying and where the discussion was going on. How could Baba know our discussion unless he be omniscient and inner ruler of us all? Significant and Prophetic Title I began to think why Sai Baba should call me by the name Hemadpanth. This word is a corrupt form of Hemadripant. This Hemadripant was a well-known minister of the kings Mahadev and Ramdev of Devgiri of the Yadav dynasty. He was very learned, good-natured and the author of good work, 
सच एज चतुर्वर्ग चिंतामणि और डीलिंग विथ स्पिरिचुअल सब्जेक्ट्स एंड राज प्रसिद्धि ही इन्वेंटेड एंड स्टार्टेड न्यू मेथड्स ऑफ अकाउंट्स एंड वॉज द ओरिजिनेटर ऑफ द मोदी और मराठी शॉर्ट हैंड स्क्रिप्ट बट आई वॉज क्वाइट द ऑपोजिट एन इग्नोरेमस एंड ऑफ डल मेडियोकर इंटेलेक्ट सो आई कुड नॉट अंडरस्टैंड वाई द नेम और टाइटल वॉज कन्फर्ड अपॉन मी बट थिंकिंग सीरियसली अपॉन इट आई थॉट दैट द टाइटल वॉज अ डार्ट टू डिस्ट्रॉय माई ईगो सो दैट आई शुड ऑलवेज रिमेन मीक एंड हम्बल इट वॉज ऑल्सो अ कॉम्प्लीमेंट पेड टू मी फॉर द क्लेवरनेस इन द डिस्कशन लुकिंग टू द फ्यूचर हिस्ट्री वी थिंक दैट बाबास वर्ड और कॉलिंग मिस्टर दाबोलकर बाय द नेम हेमाड पंत वॉज सिग्निफिकंट एंड प्रोफेटिक एज वी फाइंड दैट ही लुकड आफ्टर द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ साई संस्थान वेरी इंटेलिजेंटली kept nicely all the accounts and was also the author of such a good work sai satcharitra which deals with such important and spiritual subjects as gnana bhakti and dispassion self surrender and self realization about the necessity of a guru hemad pant has left no note no memo about what baba said regarding this subject but kaka sahib dikshit has published his notes regarding this matter Next day after Himadpan's meeting with Sai Baba Kaka Saheb went to Baba and asked whether he should leave Shirdi Baba said yes then someone asked Baba where to go Baba said high up then the man said how is the way Baba said there are many ways leading there there is one way also from here the way is difficult there are tigers and wolves in the jungles on the way I or Kaka Saheb asked But Baba what if we take a guide with us Baba answered Then there is no difficulty the guide will take you straight to your destination avoiding wolves tigers and ditches etc On the way if there be no guide there is the danger of your being lost in the jungles or falling into ditches Mr Dabolkar was present on this occasion and he thought that this was the answer Baba gave to the question whether guru was a necessity and he thereupon took the hint that no discussion of the problem whether man is free or bound is of any use in spiritual matters but that on the contrary real parmarth is possible only as the result of the teachings of the guru as is illustrated in this chapter of the original work in the instances of great avatars like rama and krishna who had to submit themselves to their gurus वशिष्ठ एंड संदीपानी रिस्पेक्टिवली फॉर गेटिंग सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन एंड दैट द ओनली वर्च्यूज नेसेसरी फॉर सच प्रोग्रेस आर फेथ एंड पेशंस बो टू श्री साई पीस बी टू ऑल श्री स्वामी समर्थ अवधूत चिंतन श्री गुरुदेव दत्त सद्गुरु साई नाथाय नम प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू अवर चैनल एंड क्लिक ऑन द बेल आइकन so that you will get notified of all our updates also like and share this video with your friends and don't forget to leave your comments thank you